Hey guys, it's Miss Leone here, and today we're going to be shading forms using the pointillism stippling technique. For this assignment, we need a piece of paper, we need a ruler, a sharpie, or any color marker, as long as it's not yellow or a highlighter, um, and a pencil. All right, and I like to always, when I do this, have a few extra sheets of paper underneath. Um, I'm actually going to take one just so I can test my marker out. You always want to do that. Make sure it's not dried out. And um, paper underneath it in case when you're making your pointillism stippling dots, it bleeds through. It won't damage uh, your table or anything underneath it. All right, so let's start. So we're going to title this Shading Forms using pointillism stippling. All right, and we're going to put our name. So the thing with pointillism and stippling is the closer together the dots are, the darker the value it's going to be, and the more far apart the dots are, the lighter the value. So we're creating different values using dots. So just like we did cross-hatching and hatching, we use lines. Today we're using dots. All right, so we're going to start by just splitting up our page into six sections. So one horizontal line and two vertical lines. All right, so I'm going to start with the sphere. And then we're going to draw a circle. So we're drawing with a pencil very lightly, because then when we're done, we are going to be erasing the pencil mark. So we'll only have our dots. So just sketch lightly, and you can also adjust the shape. Make sure it's what you're looking for. I'm just going to tilt my page so I can get these angles a little better. Okay, the sphere is always my least favorite one to draw. I'm just going to erase that little edge. It's not working out right now, so that's why we sketch lightly. We can erase and then erase any extras, any stray marks. I'm just going to fix this edge. Mm, no. There we go. So when you're correcting your forms, it's almost like shaving, like sculpting. You're just kind of adjusting your lines. So now we're going to draw our background lines. And that's it for the pencil for now. Next we're going to take our Sharpie and we are going to start outlining, but we're outlining using dots. So let me just show you a few things real quick. So when you're holding the marker, or you can use a Crayola marker, whatever marker, red, orange, not yellow, but blue, green, purple, brown, gray. Make sure that you're taking your time. The dots should be neat. You're holding your marker upright, right? So if you do it this way, they're going to be sloppy. Also, you want to take your time and only go as fast as you can be neat because of what happens if I go too fast. It starts getting all messed up looking. And also you can smash your marker. All right, so let's start. We're just gonna, using dots, going over the pencil mark. Just be very careful because there's no erasing once we start using the marker. So I am turning my page so I can have better control. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm going to do my little background lines. We'll erase all the pencil marks when we're done. <clears throat> all right, so that's what it looks like. You can see there's no actual lines. I didn't go like this. All right, I'm just using dots. Okay, so now we're done. Now we're going to start to add value. So what I like to do, especially when we're first learning, is I'm going to... Oh, and actually before I start shading, I need to identify my light source. So for this one, my light source is going to be over here. The reason we have to identify our light source is because if we know where the light is coming from, then we know where it's going to be lightest and darkest. So we have our light source in the upper right, and I'm just going to be lightly with a pencil making like this curving C shape really, really lightly. You can barely see it. And now I know that I'm going to keep my dots on that side. So the first layer is going to be light in value and it's going to be very far apart. So I'm just going to very far away, just start like that. And now I know where my shadow is going to be and I'm going to use dots randomly spread out far. This is our lightest value. Okay, and that's it for that step. Next, I'm going to go in with my pencil again. And I'm going to get medium. And all these lines we are going to be erasing, so make sure it's light. So I know I'm going to stay on that side of it. And now we're going to get closer together without touching. And then we'll go back once we're done with the darkest value and adjust. We want it to look like it's diffusing, like if you were spraying like air freshener or Lysol or something. When it first comes out, picture these as molecules. When it first comes out of the can, they're close together and then they start to disperse and diffuse and they get more scattered. So that's our medium. And then we're gonna go in and draw one more curving line at the edge. And then we can always add. So I'm being cautious here because if you add too many, you can't take them away. But if you don't add enough, you can always add more. So at this point, I'm going to have these dots touching each other. But a little white peeking through, though, at the same time. Not solid. Because when we add our cast shadow, that's going to be more solid. So now I'm looking at it and I can tell, see how it's so solid and then it just jumps to medium. So I'm going to add a few more medium dots a little closer together. So it looks like it's gradually changing and it's not so sharp. Just in this lower section. Okay, so now that's, that's more gradual. Now I'm going to add a few more medium dots in this light area a little farther away not as concentrated but just so now it'll look like it's gently turning light all right there we go and that's our first form and we're going to go in and we're going to sketch out our we're going to sketch out our shadow so another tip when you're not using the marker, just cover it because it tends to dry out really quickly. So I'm just going to get like this round just to match. Remember, the shadow has to match the shape of the form. All right, and then I'm going to trace that outline first, and then I'm going to fill it in. And this is where we're going to fill it in nice and tight. I'm just going to turn my page. The great thing about um, doing the cast shadow is that if you make a little mistake, it's okay. I'm going to angle it this way, actually. Draw the dots towards me. So it's all about angling the paper that so you're comfortable. Okay, 
once I have that, then I'm going to go in, start adding dots. I like to add them far apart and build it. Once I have enough here, I'll start filling in the little gaps. And they can touch here. And now it's going to be really concentrated. So I'm just going to pick a spot. So this is why a marker is very important for this, because, I mean, you can technically do it with a pen, but you will be making a ton of dots. So this type of marker is much easier, especially in the learning process. But if you find you're really good at this, you want to get some micron pens or Copic markers, they're really great for this technique as well. Pencil does not work for this though. The dots are way too tiny. You might use this technique maybe not for shading, maybe to make a texture. But even within textures, there are values. So this might be good for like sand, there's rocks, pebbles, something rough, far away tree leaves. So notice how I'm building it. I'm trying to keep my marker upright. stippling dots to our background just to give it a sense of space and then at this point we'll go in I'm gonna leave the cast shadow for last I don't want it to smudge but I can start erasing all of these lines that I made that way they're not visible and that's the sphere all right so next we're gonna do the cylinder. And we're doing two cylinders. We're going to do one starting with a horizontal oval. Okay, and then two vertical lines coming from the sides. Close it with a curve. And then our second one is going to be a vertical oval. And then two horizontal lines. And close it with a curve. And then we'll make our little background. And now we're going to start using our marker. So before I use the marker, I just like to use my little test paper just to make sure that the marker has been dry out. I'm going to start outlining. But outlining with dots. gently if you want to be creative and you want to like switch colors if you have color markers you wanted to switch do a different one each a different color that's fine okay next thick right there but hopefully when I add my shading it fixes it like I said there's no turning back so I'm gonna have to let it be right now I'm gonna flip it this way just want to be comfortable and have control
Okay, and I'm just going to do my little background line. Source. So in this one, I'm going to split the light source in the middle. That way, you can see how, no, depending on which side it's on, the shadow is going to change. All right, so let's do this. So again, we're going to start with our lightest value. So I'm going to actually start by drawing my light line here so I know where my highlight is going to be and my shadow is going to be on the left and inside of here. And the reason we're shading the inside is because this is um, gives it an open appearance, so like it's three-dimensional. And then I'm going to put a line right here. And this one will be flat. We won't be shading that until the end. All right, testing my marker. So very light. There we go. And then I'm just going to add randomly. Please don't organize them. They should just look like random. There we go. Boom here, far apart, same thing here. Maybe I put a couple of extra dots there than I should have, but we can make it work. All right, next, I'm gonna slightly, like a little more than halfway from the edge to there, make another line for the medium, right here, and then about here just so I know where I'm shading. Oh, and I didn't test my marker, so it made a few weird dots. Always test your marker first. Close together, but not touching. And here as well. And down here. got a couple touching luckily that's going to be my dark area anyway okay and then next just cover the marker I'm gonna make one more line on the edge and down here and in here and just fill it in leaving a little white cracks some white showing but they should be touching and then we'll adjust same thing here and then we'll just add a few extra dots here and there so it can look more gradual so that's the trick with these rounded forms with any shading technique you want the transitions to be gradual so there it's not gradual it has a sharp edge it's just like dark and then lighter so we want to make it look like it's dispersing and diffusing so I'm just gonna go in and add a few dots right here just to kind of make it look a little more softer in the transition and then over here I'm going to add a few medium okay maybe one down here maybe in here I'm going to add alright so that's almost there but now I just need a few more light dots so I think what I'm going to do is kind of just extend Add a little bit, maybe add a couple right there. Just so we do have a sense of dark, medium, and light. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. We don't want that harsh transition. And then maybe a few far away ones over here. So you have to eye it, but you just want it to look like it's gradually changing. And then here, since this is a flat edge, so picture if this was like a cup, right? This is the top open end of the cup, and this is the bottom closed end of the cup. I'm just going to add a few little dots in here, like a nice medium value, just to kind of make it look flat. 
All right, finally, let's add our cast shadow. So remember the cast shadow should um, be going in the opposite direction from the light source. So I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to pretend like it's just cut off because I have that line there. And maybe at this point, maybe it curves a little here. I feel like that might be a little, there we go. And now this one is going to be going in this direction since the cast shadow's up there. It's going to be going in the opposite direction. because that's horizontal. All right, and now let's continue. I'm just going to angle my paper. So if you have enough room to finish the shadow, finish it. If not, you can cut it off. If you really want to, you can extend it into the other area. I'm just choosing not to. start filling them in just like I did for the sphere. Only go as fast as your hand allows you to be neat and have good craftsmanship. Once it's to that point, you just want to be filling it in. So there's barely any white showing. And then over here, so at this point, if you notice anything's a little crooked, and you can just fix it at this point. So I'm actually noticing I have two markers here. I feel like this marker is bleeding a little more than the other one. One to the other side, and try to just use the other one unless it runs out because I feel like these were crisper than down here, but this is okay because it's a shadow that works. Okay, and then we'll just add, I'm gonna switch the marker, we'll add a few background that's. kind of look like stars twinkling. So, this is also a good technique. Um, if you were painting and you wanted to paint stars, you can also use a toothpick with paint for this, a stick, the back of a paintbrush. All right, so now let's draw some cones. And we're gonna draw two of them, one with the horizontal oval. And make sure it's nice and even. Don't go too skinny because you wanna have room to make a range of values, and then down here. So this one's going to be very similar to the cylinder, except that it has a point, it has this apex. Okay, then we're going to draw one that's facing down. Maybe I'll draw it right next to it. Not too skinny. You want to be able to have a range of value. I think mine's a little slanted, so I'm going to fix that. So I'll show you how to fix that. So I feel like, yes, definitely. Mine is angling a little to that one side. So I am just going to correct it. And I am sketching very lightly because I want to be able to erase. Oh, and I didn't erase on the other one, so I'll do that now. So, 
Let's just take a step back here and just erase. Alright, so yeah, I can definitely see that my marker, I'm glad I didn't use that marker for the form itself. So just test your markers out, guys. That's actually, a, I'm glad that happened to me so you can see that. I'm going to just make this a little straighter. There we go. And remember, the better you draw them, once we do this marker, there's no turning back. So I'm going to draw that line. Okay. Identify my light source. I'm going to switch it to this upper left. Not using that marker. I just grabbed the wrong marker again. Alright, so I have this one. Let me test it. Yeah, that's much better. So we're going to start tracing using dots. turning back here. This reminds me of almost like a sewing machine making stitches. If you see any big spaces, you can just add a few dots here and there. Okay, next. So if here and there you get like a rogue dot, it looks a little sloppy, um, it's okay. I'm going to be very understanding about that. This is very permanent, any markers. So we just want to make sure that we are um, being neat as we can and I can tell. Alright, so now we're going to make our line so we know where we're shading. So I'm going to go like around here. And then on the inside, because this is like an open cone, and then right here. So I'm just going to go about halfway, and then I'll just be able to adjust it after. Okay? So, yep. Oh, and I realize my light source is there, so I'm glad I noticed that. Let me move my line over a little bit. Right here. And here. Okay. So I'm going to start adding my dots, testing out my marker first, so I don't get any little stray dry dots. Starting with the lightest value. Okay, and then some in here, on the opposite side. Same thing here. Next, I'm going to make another line. So this line, I'm going to actually tilt a little bit at this point. So just to follow the shape of the form here, too, just slightly. And now I'm going to put my medium past that line. Try not to make them touch. If a couple of them touch, it's okay, but just do your best to try not to make them touch still. And then in here. And then over here. Alright, and then finally for our darkest edge. Right here, and right here, I'm going to 
just go in along the edge and then I can always fizzle it back out. Oh, and I always bring that up here. So leaving some white, we don't want it to be so solid black, just leave some white of the page. Same thing here. Okay, now I'm going to just adjust so it's not as sharp. I'm just going to bring a few more dots into the medium area. And then a few more into slightly into the lighter area. So it really looks like it's changing in value, diffusing softly. Same thing here. Draw, closing my marker, make sure it doesn't dry out. Now we're going to draw our cast shadow. So we have the light here. So the shadow is going to come around here. Now if you were drawing from observation and actually looking at objects, you would just draw where you see the light, but we're just kind of, this is for learning purposes. And I think it could be a little fatter. Alright, and then next, this one. I'm just going to go in and erase anything extra. pieces there. I'll fill it in once I'm filling that in. Okay. And again, if you make any mistakes, you can always, for the cast shadow, it's easier to fix. It's just a little crooked. Alright, so now we're going to start filling in. Doo -doo -doo. Mm -mm. Actually, very relaxing. You can kind of zone out. If you put music on, maybe do some pointillism to the beat. Okay, and then we're just going to add our random little dots in the background just so it has like a sense of atmosphere. Okay. Then I'm going to go in and just erase my pencil lines. Being careful to wherever you added dots last, just erase that last. So it doesn't smudge. Alright, so I'll just make my own look. 
see the paper I had underneath. There's like little dots there that go through. So that's why we want to have paper underneath. Okay, so now we're moving on to the flat forms. So the rounded forms, we're all about getting them to gradually change um, into each other. For the flat forms, the different sides are solid values. So let's start drawing our cuboids. Let me write cuboid here. So I feel like these are easier to shade, but they're still a little tricky to draw, so be careful. Starting with a square. If it's crooked, we can fix it after. Okay, and let's see, I feel like this is a little crooked, this can be straighter. angles so that way that way that way I'm still seeing people make the bottom straight so don't do that please it should not be straight they need to be angled and parallel to each other so make sure that they're parallel meaning the same angle and then here I'm just gonna make a vertical line and a horizontal line across So you can see here, I actually didn't go as long as my lines were, so I'm going to erase that extra line. Okay, next I'm going to draw my tall rectangular prism, so starting with the rectangle. one go in the opposite direction but the three lines should be parallel remember they're not straight they should be angled going the same way and then I'm going to add my background line so I want it to be above the corner of the cube but not lining up with this part of the rectangle because it just makes for awkward composition so I'm going to go slightly over the back of the cube make sure you're not drawing through them okay and then I'm going to identify my light source so I'm going to put it on this I'm just switching it up all right so now we're done with the pencil grab your marker I'm going to test it always test it first Okay, making sure that it's not um, dried out. And then we're going to start, uh, and I just noticed, I think I'm going to fix this. I feel like this one, um, this is not nice, fix this. I just noticed that, so if you notice something, just fix it real quick, guys. You don't want to end up with a uh, crooked form. Because once you put that marker, that's it. This, let's see, I have this angle. This should be more angled. So another way to check would be if I slide my pencil this way. Yep, I'm glad I fixed that. It was slightly off, but I noticed. So if you notice it, fix it. And then let me just double check so that. Okay, good. Yep, those are fine. All right, so grab the marker. So the reason I'm doing the I'm doing the parallel lines be 
because I want them to be um, even. So I kind of see how I can fix that, but luckily that's going to be our dark side, so it shouldn't be an issue. And then I'm going to trace here. So now we're ready to just start adding shading. We're not going to be drawing any marks here. We're just going to go for it. So again, the tops are going to stay white of the page. White is a value. It's going to stay white. The second um, value is going to be medium. So we're going to do the side medium and the front of this medium because they would be technically the second closest. And then the front of the cube and the side of the rectangular prism will be the darkest. So let's start randomly with the medium. Okay, close together but not touching. Okay, we're going to do medium here too. Again, close together but not touching. Leaving some space. Okay, and now we're going to start on our darkest value. So it's going to start just like that medium. And then from there I'm going to start filling in but leaving some white showing, okay? So they can touch here and there, that's fine. We don't want it, we want some white to show because when we add our shadow, that's where we're gonna see the difference in value. We want to have contrast so it stands out from each other.
Okay, leaving some white, not all the way. And then here, I'm going to make this one not as dark as the dark, but not as light as the medium. Kind of like a step four, if we were looking at our value scales. So just start filling in the little, they can touch. So this is up to you. If you want to make it that dark, you can. Or you can just do like I'm doing. I'm just going to leave more white showing. Because there's only two sides, so you have a choice. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. Yep, okay. Now I'm going to draw my cast shadow. So again, the shadow's there, the light's there, shadow's going opposite. These two should be parallel, and then, and this should actually be at this angle, so let me fix that. And then this one, since the light source is more to the left of it, the shadow's going to go kind of to the right. Start outlining, test your paper, test your work on the paper. I didn't do my little background dots there, so I'll have to add those when I add the ones for this box. I knew something was missing. So remember here, it's going to be darker than that edge, than this side, because um, we want it to contrast, we want it to stand out. one we can leave a little more white if we want than that just because that one is so much lighter but let's see how this goes so once you have a bunch just start filling in the little areas background dots, so I'm going to add them here and then to the other one for the cuboids because I didn't add them. Let's make sure they're random. Okay, well, no set number. Alright, so finally we're going to draw our pyramid. Last one, guys. pyramid's easy and it's only two sides so we're just going to start with a vertical line okay and then here uh, is it, mm, it looks a little slanted let's see it might be slant yep yeah, it's slanted i'm just going to erase it and do it again it's only one line sure that these are angled. I'm still seeing a lot of people going straight across. It should not be straight across. 
I want it to be angled upward, this side too. I'm not necessarily going to use the whole line. Okay, and then I'm just going to erase anything extra here. So in this case, it's going to be right there on the upper right, which means the shading is going to be on the opposite on the left. So test my marker. Okay. Start outlining. I'm going to tilt my paper for this. Look, my triangular prism may be a little smaller than I usually do them, but I think it works. Usually I make them a little taller. So it's all relative. So if you're making it taller, the sides have to be wider. It's all relative. All right, so we have our light there. Let's start adding our shading. So we can do the same thing like we did here since there's literally only two sides here. up there. I think this one's going to have to be a little darker. Got a little dense at the apex. The apex is the point. That just means I have to make the shadow a darker value than Okay. 